makers of Old Gold Cigarettes present Ted Mack and the Original Amateur Hour. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, this is Dennis James inviting you now to kind of settle back, relax, and light up an old gold. America's smooth cigarette. This is the cigarette that gives you a treat instead of a treatment. The cigarette that treats you better in every way, because in every way, it is a better cigarette. Yes, sir, folks. If you want a smooth, mild, tasty cigarette, you want an old gold cigarette. And now, the original amateur hour produced by the Major Bow staff with Ted Mack, and here he is. <laughs> well, first of all, let's, let's give a great big special hello to you folks out in Fort Worth, Texas, who are joining us over WFAA-TV out there. And, uh, well, same thing that's going on around here. We're just brim full of excitement. Uh, uh, only a few days till Madison Square Garden, as you know. So let's not waste any time. Let's spin that Wheel of Fortune for the 922nd time. Round and round she goes, and where she stops, nobody knows. And first we have young Clarinetist from Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. Standing right out there, got the reed all wet, and I guess he's ready to go. This is Frank Castanera, Castanano. All set, Frank? Okay, take it away, will you? He's from Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania, and you know how to vote for these amateurs, don't you? If New York, you pick up the telephone, call Luxembourg 2, 3, 100, and one of the old gold operators will answer you, and you just place your vote. And if you can't call, well, you'd have a postcard to Box 191 Radio City Station, also in care of old gold cigarettes right here in New York. Now, from the Bronx, a young lady who wants to be a record star, Rosemarie DeLeo. Got your mind all made up to sing on records, huh, Rosemarie? Yes, sir. Uh, my father was an actor and a singer. He was yeah. my coach since I've been two years of age, since so I want to be like him. He started early, didn't he? Yes, he did. Uh, mm -hmm. Suppose a nice young fella comes along and uh, looks kind of romantic to you. What about your career then? Well, if he doesn't like a girl that sings on records, he's just not the right young man. You heard that, didn't you? This is leap year, too. <laughs> All right, what are you going to sing for us? Undecided. Undecided. I don't think you're undecided a bit, but let's, let's hear it. Go ahead. <laughs> First you say you do, and then you don't, and then you say you will, that's when you won't. You're undecided now, so what are you gonna do? Now you wanna play, and then it's no, and when you say you'll stay, that's when you go. You're undecided now, so what are you gonna do? I've been sitting on a fence, and it don't make no sense. You keep me in suspense, and you know it. You promise to return when you don't, I really burn. Guess I'll never learn, and I show it. If you 
got a heart and if you're kind, don't keep us apart, make up that mind. You're undecided now, so what are you gonna do? I've been sitting on a fence and it don't make sense. You keep me at the fence and you know it. Hey, you promise to return when the door I really burn. Guess I'll never learn and I show it. So if you got a heart and if you're kind, don't keep us apart, make up that mind. You're undecided now, so baby, what are you gonna do? Undecided. All right, that was Rosemary DeLeo. Rosemary DeLeo wants to be a recording star one day. Well, the telephone number is Luxembourg 23100. Just call up and ask for the old gold operator, and uh, if you can't call, you write a postcard. Box 191, Radio City Station, also in care of old golds. Now, contestant from New Hyde Park, Long Island, wants to do a tap dance for us, Catherine Kreutner. Uh, you look a little familiar to me, Catherine. Were you here before? Oh, yes, Mr. Mack, but many years ago, before they even had television. Well, for goodness sake, we, we've been here for five years. It uh, wasn't before that, was it? Not quite, but you see, so many people have television sets now that they didn't have any before. Uh -huh. And besides, you have the championships now. I think we finally got around to the subject, didn't we? <laughs> yes. You see those beautiful cups over there? What, let's let the, the audience take a look at them, too. Can you get a camera on them? There they are, the one, one on the right, that's the sponsor's trophy, and that carries $750 award with it. And then there's the sponsor's cup in the center there with $1,250. And finally, the big amateur hour award, and that carries the national championship and $2,000 in cash. And of course, there's a, a duplicate for both television and radio. I suppose, you'd, uh, I suppose you'd be glad to carry any one of those away with you, would you? Oh, I certainly would, Mr. Matt. You would, huh? Yes. Is your, your mama, your daddy here with you tonight? They are. They are, and I bet they're pretty proud of you. All right, come on, now let's see your dance. Go and do it on your toes, huh? Yes. All right. <laughs> Long Island, the telephone number is Luxembourg 23100. Well, friends, here's the only tobacco shop in, in the world where you get a free liberal education on the uses of tobacco. Let's listen to Dennis James for a minute or two. Well, thank you, Ted, very much. Uh, you know, I think there's only one real, definite, important use to tobaccos, and that use is to bring pleasure, deep down, enjoyable smoking pleasure. And that's what you get in every single old gold cigarette that you smoke. Smoking pleasure. The pleasure that comes from the selecting, the curing, and the blending of the world's best tobaccos. Tobaccos like you see right here. Tobaccos like this bright gold leaf tobacco from the Carolinas and Virginia. This is in your old golds for flavor. And tobaccos like this mild, magnificent burley from Kentucky and Tennessee, and I mean, that's as mild as a baby. And for aroma, we have imported aromatic Turkish tobacco which is fine and soft and very, very silky. I know you can't touch it, but here, take a better look at it. Now, these tobaccos you see in front of me, and these you see here, 
There are just a few of the more than 50 different kinds and types of tobaccos that go into old golds. That's right, I said more than 50 different kinds and types. And pay attention to this tobacco right here. This is Maryland tobacco, known for its unusually mild qualities. Well, all these tobaccos are tied together to bring out just the right flavor of each by Latakia tobacco from the shores of the Mediterranean. Just a pinch, that's all you need. And then here's the blend of all these tobaccos, a blend of really fine tobaccos. Man, I mean, they're fine tobaccos, too. I love that. If I had more time, I'd do it again. Really fine tobacco, shredded and blended by the world's greatest tobacco craftsmen, all ready to be put into the most modern equipment known to man. And then, to be packed in this paper of pure virgin flax, the finest that money can buy. It's a composite of all these things and know-how that gives every single old gold cigarette that you smoke that deep down smoking pleasure. Now you notice I mentioned the word pleasure. I think you've heard about irritation around in your, your travels. Well, when it comes to things like irritation, just remember this, will you? This is the cigarette about which it has been said. No other leading cigarette is less irritating, easier on the throat, or contains less nicotine than old gold cigarettes. Now, that is not something that I said. It is not something the makers of old gold cigarettes said. This conclusion was established on evidence by the United States government. With that, we just like to put it on the record because in spite of that, we talk to you about pleasure. The pleasure of taking an old gold and smoking it. Yes, the pleasure of the world's best tobaccos in every old gold. To give you a treat instead of a treatment. Try them. You'll like them. I know you will. Thank you, Ted, very much. All right. Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> I remember that telephone number. It's Luxembourg 23100, or it's box 191, Radio City Station, right here in, in little old New York. Well, tonight, friends, it's sort of a homecoming to me to take you out to the wide open spaces and salute a city that is known as the, the gateway to the West, or out where the West begins, is the way they put it out there. Tonight, we're saluting Fort Worth, Texas. I've um, <laughs> got some Texans here tonight. Uh, well, as I, I say, I kind of feel at home. I, I've been in Fort Worth many times during my career. As a matter of fact, I think maybe Fort Worth is one of the places where I got a, my hankering for 10-gallon hats and Hereford cattle and horses. And so I, I'd kind of like to take you for a little trip around our honor city. You can see it right there, and you can see that it's a city of tall office buildings, has wonderful homes and handsome boulevards, which, of course, aren't in that picture. But is this city busy? Well... More than 600 oil companies make their headquarters right here in Fort Worth. The biggest pipeline network in the whole world brings the liquid gold into the city. But it wasn't always that way. Here's an old picture of how Fort Worth started a little over 100 years ago. It got its name from this military post. And uh, here I tried to cook up a little comparison for you of the earlier method of getting around along with the, uh, well, I mean... Chisholm Trail way back in the old days and then the way they get around today. This is one of the Fort Worth big industries today, the place where they turn out the gigantic B-36 bombers for Uncle Sam. Another big industry in, is uh, in this scene right here. Fort Worth has one of the largest stockyards, or has the largest stockyard south of St. Louis. And still, just a little way out of town, they herd the candidates for these uh, stockyards in real Wild West fashion, as you can see that fellow doing right there. But it isn't all big business in Fort Worth. As most of you know, it's the home of Texas Christian University, Southwest Theological Seminary. It has Texas Wesleyan and many other fine schools, along with acres of playgrounds, pools, and lovely, lovely parks. So you can see that, uh, well, with this short glimpse that we've been able to give you tonight, that it's a traditional all-American West that uh, is kind of represented by our honor city and we of the amateur hour and the makers of old gold cigarettes would like to give you a typical amateur hour salute to one of the fine cities out where the West begins, Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, now let's see. We have Charles Miller, Edward Rass, Fred Sindel, and Rosemary Jessen, all from Hollis, Long Island. They call themselves the Leone Musical Society. Don't see anyone's name here. Leone. Rosemary, suppose you're the... Folks, and what, what is that, the name of your school or something yes, like that? Sir. I see. Well, got to do well for the school tonight, then. What are you going to play? Spanish. 
All right. Uh, you got your crew all ready? All right, let's hear it. Long Island. The telephone number is Luxembourg 23100. Looks to me like you've kept our office, uh, operators busier than a shopper picking up beads from a broken uh, necklace in a revolving door or something. Anyway, uh, here's the way the votes stand. And now the clarinet is from Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. <coughs> Frank Castano, 1,634 votes. The young lady from the Bronx who sang for us wants to be a recording star, Rosemary DeLeo, 1,572. Young tap dancer from New Hyde Park, 1,251. And the boy soprano from East Braintree, Massachusetts, 623. You know, uh, we've had lots of, uh, quite a number of letters from nice people out there who wanted us to turn another page in the Amateur Hour album. That's the pictorial record we've kept over all of these, well, almost 18 years in radio and television. And uh, they wanted to have another look at one of the rising stars, or the stars that made good here on the Amateur Hour. So we have another page. Will you, will you take the camera over there and let's see it? I'll let you take a little guess. See that little lady on the, on the left there with Major Bowes? Remember? Do you think you could tell who she is? Well, let's have the other picture anyway. Here she is, as you know her today, one of the greatest of the Hollywood great names, the MGM star, the delightful dancing Vera Ellen. Well, I say it, always say it's your support of these youngsters when they're on the show and your interest and support afterwards that have, have made them the stars, and that's why I keep asking you to call Luxembourg 2, 3, 100 here and see if we can't make it happen for one of these rising Vera Ellens. And uh, in that regard, if any of you have any talent and, and you want to be on the show, we've talked about Madison Square Garden and now all of that business, but uh, after the championships, we go right on winter, summer, fall, and spring, the amateur hour just keeps going on and on. We'll be auditioning all over the country. We'll be auditioning right here in New York. So you, you let us know. That's Box 191 Radio City Station. You write to me and tell me what you do, and maybe we'll find you here <coughs> on the amateur. Now here's another singer. Oh, yes, another one selected by the Boston Post. He was one of the winners in the music festival. His name is Kenneth Scott. Kenneth, let's find out a little about you. Are you a Boston boy? Yes, Mr. Matt. I come from no, I come from Dorchester, Massachusetts. Oh, from Dorchester. That's just just a little outside of that. Huh? <laughs> did you uh, did, did you enjoy that big contest? I was up there and I saw you all up there. Did you have fun? Yes, I think it was pretty exciting. Yes, it was. Uh, did you have any idea that you were going to win? Well, no, Mr. Matt, because there was lots of other good singers besides myself. Mm -hmm. too. But you did win, so you must feel pretty good. Yes. Now, what are you going to sing for us? Ave Maria. Ave Maria, Schubert, Ave Maria. Very good. This is Kenneth Scott.
Dennis Scott from Georgia to Massachusetts. Dennis Scott, telephone number is Luxembourg 23100 or it's post office box 191, Radio City Station. Hi, Dennis. Ted, I have a card here that'll fit very beautifully into your wallet. It's from Mayor uh, J.R. Edwards of uh, the city of Fort Worth, Texas, making you the honorary citizen of Fort Worth, Texas. Oh, golly, that's quite an honor, isn't it? The honorary citizen of Fort Worth. That's, that's, uh, that, that's kind of like those people out there. I didn't say it a minute ago, but uh, I know Fort Worth awful well because once upon a time I had a dance band down there. As a matter of fact, I think I opened the Blackstone Hotel down there with my dance band. Had a wonderful time. They remember that because there was a little notation which said that if Ted Mack ever comes down to Fort Worth again with a band, yeah. we want him to have at the head of his parade this flag. Let's open the curtain, fellas. The flag of the Republic of Texas. Wow, hey, the Lone Star State. Well, I think right now we ought to turn Dottie and Harry loose on the eyes of Texas. But I think maybe we'd have the place in a, in a turmoil here. Anyway, that's awfully nice of you all. And, and that'll certainly be hanging right in the middle of the Amateur Hour Museum. And I hope I do get a chance to come down to Fort Worth. I don't think I'll have a dance band, but I'd sure like to come down anyway. Well, now let's see what we have here. Uh, oh, my gracious, look at this. Message, William Rogers. General Sales Manager of MGM is taking 50 orphans to the Madison Square Garden Championship as his guest. Isn't that nice? Here's a check from the Navy Mothers Club, 180, holding their convention in Toledo from June the 16th to the 20th. They want to invite hospitalized Navy veterans to the Garden. Another check from the Navy Mothers, number 487 of Fremont, Ohio. They'll, well, we'll let the 52 Association take care of all of those hospitalized veterans. They're very glad to. Here's a check from... The chapter and auxiliary of the Scott County Number no. 2, Disabled American Veterans of Moline, Illinois. And, uh, well, that reminds me, we still have a few $2 and $3 tickets, the good seats, and I think maybe I won't have uh, very much time to tell you about it. I think if you're smart, you'll run over there to the garden box office and, and pick up a couple for yourself because, well, you'll be seeing a wonderful show. And as I have said so many times before, thanks to our sponsors, Old Gold, all of the proceeds are going to the... New York Foundling Hospital. If you can't go by the garden, I'll be glad to take care of the reservations for you. It's Box 191, Radio City Station. Oh, wait a minute. Here's another one. Another one. Just got a message from Mr. R. Sabarin, who says the Federation of Chiropractors here in town on their 11th annual convention wants to donate a check for tickets for 160 veterans for the national championship. Well, that's very wonderful. Thank you all so much, and I'm sure these veterans are going to have the time of their lives there. Well, now, here's a young lady, won an audition uh, when our staff visited New Rochelle, New York. Her name is Jacqueline McDonald. Staff tells me that you're the uh, baton majorette or something of the high school band out there, is that yes, right? Yes, sir. Well, that's quite an important event or position. Sure is, but this is about the most important thing right now. What is? This is about the most important thing right now. Is that right? How, do you, how come you feel that way? Well, even though I've won second place in New Jersey, third in New York State, and second in Westchester County, I'd still like to win first year. You'd like to win first for a change, huh? Sure. <laughs> well, that, that's uh, certainly all right with us. If you can do it, I don't know how many judges you had out there in New Jersey and in Westchester County, but you've got uh, millions of them out there tonight, so all you have to do is do a good job the way she crossed her fingers right then. Better let it, let them see you do that just before you start. Eh? <laughs> all right, come on, let's see you twirl this baton, twirl it for all your worth. Thank you. 
McDonald, Jacqueline McDonald from New Rochelle, New York. The telephone number is Luxembourg 23100 or Box 191 Radio City Station. Well, I just want you to know that our units are still going great guns. And, uh, of course, we've been taking up so much time telling you about the amateur hour, I mean the uh, championship at Madison Square Garden. I don't think I'll have a chance to run down all of the towns they're playing in, but I did want you to know that they're, uh, we were thinking of it just yesterday. We thought it might be a good idea to bring a a few of the, the top stars out of the units and bring them in and add them to the Madison Square Garden show just to let you see how they've kind of polished the corners off since they've been out doing two and three, four shows a day. They really have improved. You, you'd hardly recognize some of them. After, after the garden, we've got some dates where we're going to have them join us again in an in-person show. For instance, we're going to Richmond, Virginia. And uh, in this, this case, the staff and I are going to turn over 100% of the Methodist Home for the Age down there in the Crippled Children's Hospital. And, uh, well, we hope and think that's going to be a bang-up show. And then uh, later on in the year, we're going down to San Antonio, Texas. And uh, we're going to do a show down there. And uh, once more, the staff and I are going to turn over 100% of that show to the Benet Brith down there. So we'll be traveling high, wide, and handsome just after, as soon as we've finished with our Madison Square Garden show. Well, let's get on here. Here's a man who polishes automobiles in Philadelphia, wants to play piano for us. Uh, his name is Raymond Eggert. Do you play popular or classical music, Raymond? I don't hear you, Mr. Max. I say, do you play popular or classical music? I can't hear you. Well, you're not, you're not joking with me, are you? Wait a minute, I'll come over there. You're, you're not joking. No, you? I'm not joking. I went down the quarry when I was a uh, safe film fellow one time. What do you mean you went down the I quarry? I went down about 60 feet deep. In water? Yes. And it, it affected your Broke hearing? the eardrum. Well, that's a shame. Well, you saved the man's yeah, life to man. He, was, he had his head on an old wagon wheel that was down there. So. Oh, really, I I think that's quite but a I wonderful did, I went thing. As a matter of fact, I, I think you folks ought to give there. this man a little round of applause. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, when you lost your hearing, I'll always walk over to you. So what, what are you going to do for us? Play. I'm going to play the piano. Play the piano? Yeah. Well, you go ahead. I'll stand here I'm not going to tell you how I'm going to play it. Well, I, you can play it any way you want. Okay. I've heard about you. Thank go you. Ahead. <laughs> Raymond Eggert, uh, uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Once more, that telephone number, Luxembourg 23100, or it's Box 191, Radio City Station. Dennis James, I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm in the mood for a little dancing by your two girlfriends. How about bringing them out? I think with two minds, with but a single thought. Yeah. Here they are, the old girl dancing cigarette pack, the little book of matches dancing for everybody right now. Let's look. <laughs> Thank you. 
You know, somehow or other, they remind me of old gold cigarettes. I guess it has nothing to do with the writing on the pack, just the smoothness and the good taste with which they dance. Remember, every time they do dance, they're doing it for a specific purpose, to tell all of you folks exactly how smooth and mild and tasty old gold cigarettes really are. They suggest that you buy a pack or a carton, and I hope that you take their suggestion. Remember, it's old gold cigarettes for a treat instead of a treatment. Thank you, Ted. Thank you very much, Dennis. Well, now, let's see. We have um, a farmer's wife from, well, all the way from Castlewood, South Dakota. She wants to whistle for us. Lorraine Page. Uh, where is Castlewood, uh, Mrs. Page? Anywhere near Sioux Falls? Yes, sir. It's about 100 miles north. Is that right? Well, I played Sioux Falls lots of times in my one-nighter days. Uh, uh, you got some busy time out around there. Isn't this about hay in time out there? Oh, yes. We'll have to get back pretty quick now. What do you mean, we? Oh, my husband and I. <laughs> we don't have television out there in South Dakota, so uh -huh. we thought we'd come and see you and have oh, a vacation now, at the same time. wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the long trip was worth it, do you? <laughs> well, well, I, I do. you've had a lot of fun on the way. Did you drive? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm sure you'll have a nice drive back and be careful on the way back, will you? Oh, Been please. having a lot of accidents lately. Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to whistle for us now. Let's hear you. Yes, I'm going Go to ahead. do the Hot Canary. All right. Oh, that's difficult. All right. <laughs> Hot Canary. Well, anyway, it's, it's Post Office Box 191, Radio City Station, or Luxembourg 2, 3100. Dan, here's the way you called and, and mailed in your cards last week. Here's the way it all came out. Fifth place was the young lady who did the satire of Jerry Lewis and Johnny Ray, Barbara Kaner. Fourth, the Malvern Dixieland Band. Third, the mechanic from the Fairchild plant on Long Island, harmonica playing Edward Schmidt. Second, the Polish boy who played the violin, Alan Schiller. And in first place, well, we've had uh, television champions from Maryland and from Missouri, from Jersey, uh, Wisconsin, Massachusetts, and uh, who do you think came through last week? Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, they came through, and they're three-time winners now, the Shamrockettes. So we'll be seeing them at Madison Square Garden. <coughs> you remember last week, pardon me, you remember last week we had a little... Oh, contest within a contest. The United States Air Force sent us two of their WAFs to have you folks decide who should have an engagement singing with the famous Army Air Force band. Well, here's how it all came out. You almost swamped us with these, these votes, too. Anyway, you gave the most votes to the girl who originally comes from Cleveland, Ohio. She's now stationed at the Lackland Air Force Base in Texas, sang Italian street song. Airman third class, Martha Che. And as I say, Martha will have an engagement with the famous United States Air Force Band. Now, let me see who we have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of you, huh? They're all businessmen from West Haven, Connecticut. They call themselves Sidney Bukoff's Gypsies. Who's Sidney Bukoff? I'd like to talk to Al All right, well, let's... Uh, him be the spokesman. Uh, any of you really gypsies? Yeah. Well, no. We do play gypsy music, as we did for Major Bose. As you did for Major Bose. Were you on the show back in Major Bose time? 
17 years ago, Mr. Mack. My gracious, we're all getting old, aren't we? We were never three-time winners. Always one at a time. One at a time, huh? Well, by golly, maybe it's your turn now to be a three-time winner. What are you going to play for us? Bright Shines the Moon. Bright Shines the Moon. Uh-huh. Gypsy Air, and we have all balalaikas. And, well, this, this ought to be very interesting. Let's hear it. <laughs> telephone number. I'll give it to you once more. Luxembourg 23100. The one thing that I, I wanted to say to you, I, I think it would all be awfully nice. I'd like very much to have you all, if you folks in the New York area, buy, buy tickets for the 11th annual North-South Lacrosse game here at the Polo Grounds this coming Friday. The reason I'm so interested in it is that the proceeds go to the Damon Runyon Memorial Fund for cancer research. And you all know how important that is. And I'm Sure, you'll see one of the finest lacrosse games in the country. Now, let me see what else I have, what other business I have to take up here. Well, uh, only one other thing, and that is that I'd like you to, to keep calling. Our old gold operators are on duty for 45 minutes after we leave the air, and I think maybe you could take a, another quick look at these contestants so you'll uh, get it fresh in your mind who you want to vote for. There they are. Let, let's, let's see them there. They're all the young people who tried very hard to please you tonight. We call Luxembourg 23100 at Box 191 Radio City Station and place your vote. And I think I ought to thank all of these nice people here in the theater for giving us their applause so generously and to you folks for supporting us all through these years. For that, we thank you all very much and good evening, friends. Mead for Old Gold. And right now I'd like to introduce Old Gold's new and up-and-coming brother, Embassy Cigarettes. Embassy, the distinctively fine, distinctively milder, king-size cigarette. I guess you know that Old Gold is my one love, but the makers of Old Gold are very broad-minded, and they feel that some folks want to travel the longy route, they certainly should travel it first class. So if you're now smoking a king-size cigarette, may I suggest a change to Embassy the distinctively milder king-size cigarette. Don't forget, tune in Ted Mack and the Original Amateur Hour next week, same time, same channel. On Thursday nights, it's Ted Mack and the Original Amateur Hour on radio. Remember Old Gold's other TV shows, Chance of a Lifetime Thursday, and down you...